Yeah, yeah. Like that one on the moon where there's no atmosphere. I ain't going to get into that. The, 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 the flag is blowing. There's no atmosphere. That's conspiracy. All right. All right. Let's take our Bibles this evening, open to Romans chapter number one, the book of Romans chapter number one this evening. I've been on my heart all week to bring this message tonight, because I want to bring you a few things here, and this is not for you just to listen to, this is for you to do something about. The Bible said to are not just be hearers, that's good, but what? Doers. Doers. So if you don't do it, you're just making yourself worse off, and so tonight, I want to look here in Romans chapter number one. Uh, don't get to pray for them. They're having revival at Rockingham this week. Actually, there's some talk about something going down maybe one night. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, don't forget that. Uh, and then, of course, our meeting's coming up here real soon. Uh, we're going down there on March 22nd. Uh, Romans chapter number one, Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, after he got saved, said this. 14, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to, excuse me, to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God. Unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. Now three times. You'll see them these two words in them verses. I am. Look at verse 14. I am what? A debtor. Everybody rich people, poor people. Everybody. 15. I am what? Ready to preach. Verse 16, I am what? That's what I want to preach about tonight. Three I ams. The greatest Christian that ever lived on the earth, as far as we know, since the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, was this man, the Apostle Paul. What a man. What a life. What a ministry. What a legacy. Wrote half the New Testament. And God struck him there on the road to Damascus changed him, saved him, called to preach, and he preached the faith which he had once destroyed. My goodness, what a man. What a man, the Apostle Paul. And he come down here in Romans, and he said, I am a debtor, I'm ready to preach, and he said, I am not ashamed. These three things, that's my outline tonight. He said, first of all, I am a debtor. Now, a debtor, the way he puts that is, I owe it to these people, to the Greek, as the real educated people of that day, the barbarians, people couldn't even read and write. He said, I owe it to all of them. Now, you and I are in the same boat tonight. Me and you sitting here in Shining Light Baptist Church, uh, first Sunday of March, 2024, we are debtors. We're debtors. You owe a debt. Uh, I never did uh, I never did appreciate people who won't pay their bills. And most people won't. One of the worst testimonies a preacher can have is say, he won't pay his bills. Or uh, your neighbor, I don't know he owes everybody in the country. Uh, you know, heard anybody say that? Won't pay up his bills. Well, did you know the night that you you owe a debt? You owe a debt. You're in debt. I'm in debt. And uh, I want to ask you tonight, are, are we paying our bills? He said, I'm debtor to the Greeks. I'm debtor to the barbarians. That means the big shots, the little shots. That means the rich people. That means the poor people. Now, I'm going to talk about witnessing tonight. And because we should and I should. And I preach myself under conviction. I, I, I'm like you. I got flesh. My flesh sometimes cringes when I'm in a situation where I, I think I should witness. And then I maybe hold back. Maybe I think I should say something. And then I don't. Just had one... Uh, the other day, and it's it's easy, you know, a man that at Walmart with the sign, and he's there, it's so easy a lot of times to walk up and say, here you go, buddy, God loves you, and the 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 down and out, no, and you see that 
that lawyer coming out of that office. And he's got that big, fancy, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of dollars suit and leather shoes. And, 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 and it, ugh, boy, that's tough. That's tough. But you know what? He's going to the same hell that that guy's going to. And we're, we're, we're an owe it to that man to be a witness to him. We owe it to him, people. We owe it to him. You are a debtor. You're a debtor to be a witness. We are so afraid that somebody's going to make fun of us. We are so afraid of being rejected. We are so afraid somebody's going to tear up a track, throw it down, or maybe even uh, cuss us out or something like that. We're terrified of it. And uh, I had, I had a, a Dickens wife one time uh, went, went knocking on doors with it one time. I preached it until I was blue in the face, and they came one time, and they knocked on the door, and somebody said, get out of here. I don't want to hear that. And slammed the door in their face. And she said, I ain't never doing this again. One time. The big crybaby. The big baby. Listen, our forefathers and foremothers were burned at the stake and martyred and, ha and had, their, had their, 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 uh, their, their bodies burned and tortured because they would not shut up. And they wouldn't be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. You teenagers in here tonight, you could be an amazing testimony for God if you just speak up. I'm a debtor. I'm a debtor. You pay your bills. I'm a debtor uh, uh, to the wicked, to the atheist, to the ungodly. How many of you ever thought you should witness somebody? Maybe somebody at school, maybe somebody at work. And right when you're going to witness to them, a little voice speaks to you and says, they're, they're, they're not going to believe. They're, they're an atheist. You're wasting your breath. Now listen, God did not say you go witness to people if you think they'll believe. God did not say in the Bible you go tell people if you're pretty sure they'll listen. He said, tell them, everyone up. I was uh, uh, running this week down in Moxville, and uh, where I stay, I stay in the old pastor, Brother Tuckle's house, and about, about a mile, there's an access road that goes down to the, to the uh, river, and I'm trying to think of the name of that river, uh, there, in that, uh, Davie County there. Um, uh, I won't say it's Dustman Creek. I don't think it's Creek. There's a river, about pretty good size river, about, about, I don't know, probably about, uh, it may be 75 feet wide, Good side of the river. And every time I preach down there, I like to go down and look at it because it's got a little boat dock and it's all wood, you see it? So I, I run down there. I said, I'm going to run all the way down there. And that day I had on a uh, sweatshirt, a hood like that. And there was a man and a young girl fishing. And uh, uh, I said, hey, how are y'all doing? Everything. They looked at me like, what? No, you no car. No, no, how'd you get here? Did you come out of the woods? Uh, something like that. And uh, I began to talk to him. And that, uh, that man said, uh, what are you doing? And I said, I'm a preacher. And I said, uh, I'm down here preaching a revival, and I'm a, a younger, and boy, it's shocking. Now, you see what I've done right there? I stuck my foot in the door immediately. I didn't say, uh, well, I did say, y'all catch anything. I did say that. Y'all catch anything? Uh, getting fish down there? I did say that. And then I immediately stuck my foot in the door. I've learned over the years, if you'll go ahead and break that ice and let them know, because my sweatshirt said, uh, this strong in the Lord. And the back of it said, shining like that church. That's why I get them shirts made, y'all. So you'll wear them in Jesus, wear them around town. It disappoints me when I work hard on them. We spend a lot of money on them. And y'all wear them three times. They wind up in the bottom of a drawer somewhere. And you advertise for Nike or something like that. Now, I'm not against a Nike shirt, but good night. Be a witness for Jesus while you're out there going to school. You ain't, don't, don't be like that. Anyway, uh, I, I, and he said, he said uh, you're a Baptist preacher. I said, yeah. He said, well, what's the gospel? I thought, oh, gosh. Well, you know what somebody, somebody, when somebody says like that, it's some smart aleck who thinks he's learned everything because he heard somebody say that on the Internet about the real definition of the gospel. And uh, I said, um, 1 Corinthians 15, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture and that he was buried. That's what he wanted to hear. I knew that's what he wanted to hear. And uh, uh, that he rose again the third day according to the Scripture. He said, shake my hand. You're the first person I ever say, asked that. That gave me the right answer. I've been through that with other people before. And he thinks, he, he said, most Baptists don't know the gospel. Most Baptists don't know the gospel. And look, you don't have to know that verse of Scripture by heart to know the gospel. 
You, all you got to know is that Jesus did die on a cross for you and that he's your Savior. But these little these little know-it-alls, uh, little nitpicky know-it-alls like them, he said, you Baptists don't know the gospel. He, he said, uh, oh, these people, they don't, they don't even know the gospel. And I took it and took it, and I said it. I, here's what I said. I said, you know what? It is bad that people don't know the gospel. But I'll tell you something worse than that. All people that know it but don't ever go tell nobody about it. He said, well, yeah, I said, you're going up and down the street, right? You're telling all your neighbors, right? Genius that knows the gospel. Listen, you got people all of that. They think they're so smart because they know two verses of scripture that most people want and will not walk across the street and knock on their neighbor's door and tell them about the Lord. I started saying, you ain't nothing but a hypocrite, son. You know the gospel. You know the gospel. I bet you ain't been visiting in five years. Probably never. Not one time. Listen, that book said we're a debtor, people. That book said we're a debtor. I am a debtor. I am a debtor. I owe it to them. You say, well, I'm timid. You pay your bills. Amen. You say, well, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Suck your thumb while you go. Get your a handful of tracks in one hand and a pacifier in the other and go down the street saying, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell the sinners far and wide. Brother, tell the gospel. Tell the gospel a little bit. Are you witnessing? Are you witnessing? I'm a debtor. I'm a debtor to the barbarian. You know what this world's like? This whole world's like a house burning down. And... Uh, and you know what? This whole world like a house burning down, and everybody has got a bucket of water. Now, I'm going to tell you something, buddy. I, I remember Ed McAbee said this. He said, it's stuck in my house. He said, the world's on fire. And he said, we all got one bucket of water. He said, I may not put that fire out, but I want my bucket empty when Jesus comes back. Amen. I may, not, I may not put the fire out here in Morgan, but I don't want the Lord to come back my bucket be full of water. I don't say, Lord, I throwed it on the fire. Lord, I told them. God, I told them. I told them. Lord, I did try to tell them. Amen. It's like a house burning down. They said a man years, many, many years ago had a dream. And this man, he was a normal Christian, like man, you layman in here tonight. And he had a dream. And he, he, a man come to him in his dream. He dreamed he was in heaven. And a man had been in heaven for almost 1,900 years. He had lived in the days of the apostles, and they be, he began to talk. He said, how long have you been here? That man said, over 1,860 years. I lived in the times of the apostle. And this man in the dream said, really? Tell me about it. He said, I was a human torch. He said, what? He said, in Nero's garden. You know, in the early days, Nero used Christians as to light up the, the garden to have a party and his wicked uh, debaucheries and he put Christians on post and lit the fire to them, throwed, throwed uh, gas on them or something. And lit a, he said, I was a human torch. And he said, I burned in Nero's garden and I've been here for 1,860 years. He said, another man came up. He said, what, what was you? He said, I was a missionary somewhere over to the South Sea Island. He said, I gave my life to missions. I didn't get to live a long life. He said, we went in there where the headhunters were. He said, they caught me and my family. They, they boiled us and ate us. And he said, uh, he said, we're here in heaven. Been shouting the victory for a hundred years. They asked the Christian, they said, uh, what is your testimony? I can just stop right here. What would we say? Well, I went to church Sunday, and then Brother Danny fussed at me, and and then and I and I, I one time I did leave a track in a restroom. That's our that's our generation. That's our and listen, we have been blessed. Listen to me. Listen, I, I know some of y'all get mad. I know some of you get mad. Tell me what I'm saying wrong. Now I apologize. If I'm right, bless God, let's do it. If I'm wrong, then tell me and I'll apologize. It is not right for us to let the world go to hell and not tell them the greatest story ever told. That's why we run buses. 
That's why we spend money on diesel fuel. That, you say, well, they don't do it. Over. I can't help what other churches do. They'll answer to God for it. I got a Bible, and the Bible said that I'm a debtor. I'm a debtor. I owe it to them to tell them. He said he woke up from that great dream, and for hours he prayed and begged God to give him another chance to be a witness. Amen? Ladies and gentlemen, he said, I'm a debtor. Number two, I am ready to preach. He said, I am ready to preach. Take time in preparation. Now, let me say something. I, mean, I know you all know this. Uh, the truth is, uh, uh, people say, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm a... The truth is, every Christian should preach. And you understand the sense in which I say that, correct? Am I, am I right? We're not all called to the ministry. Everybody's not called to the ministry, but everybody is called to preach. All preaching means is proclaim forth the gospel. So when you kids go to school and you say, you need to come to our youth rally, the Lord loves you and I love you and I'm praying for you and everything, you're actually preaching the gospel. It don't mean you're a pastor, it don't mean you're a missionary, but in that sense, we're all debtors. He said, I'm ready to preach. Now, in the Bible, the Bible said that we're to be ready. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 15, he said we're to be ready always to give an answer to those that ask us. A preacher, a preacher. And we got several preachers here in our church now. Thank God for it. That's a good sign of a real church. That's a good sign of uh, life in a church where you got young, young men called into the ministry. Because everything brings forth after its kind. A preacher brings forth preachers. Uh, uh, an elephant brings forth elephants. Amen. Tigers bring forth tigers. And preaching brings forth preachers. And so uh, uh, that, 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 that's good. And it should. And Ed Maccabee, one of my mentors, I just uh, uh, old Paul Crisco brought me something the other night. And I laid them down over here. I'm going to put them up in my office. And I'm going to show them to you. He brought me these the other night because he's heard me preach so much and knows. And he brought me this picture here of oh, Joe Parson. Brother Joe Parson is the man that preached the revival that I got saved in. Brother Joe was one day that get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And he'd pray. And Joe would get up. He'd spend time with God. And that old man, buddy, when he came to Nebo, God came with him. And that changed my life. And it, man, I mean, ain't no telling where I'd be right now if that old man of God hadn't prayed. I had never seen him. He had never seen me. And I laid on the floor and prayed for 45 minutes or so. Bawled my eyes out. I didn't do much praying. And, and he told the pastor, sitting over here, he said, God's going to use that young man right there. He had never seen me. I had never seen him. And then there's Brother Jack Wood. Brother Jack Wood was the old-fashioned cow. He's a real deal. Cowboy preacher from Texas. I mean, they'd ride over into Mexico with horses and rustle cattle. The, the old, like they did on Matt Dillon days, brother. I mean, with ropes and stuff. He got put in jail over there in, in Mexico one time. Jack Wood pastored the great Shady Acres Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. A rough section of town. Brother Wood, I mean, I mean, hey, I mean, uh, I can tell you, I can tell you, look him up, look him up. He's online. Listen, the, them preachers talk so rough back then. The, these days, people couldn't handle the way them that last generation. Look up old Carl Lackey. Did I send some of y'all that? Good night in the morning. I mean, uh, old brother Lackey, here, he, listen, when he preached, them old time preachers preached. Y'all listen to me tonight? They preached against silent movies. So there's other devil. Before movies even had sound. And then when they started putting sound, them preachers thundered out against it and said, Hollywood's right out of hell. And it is. They were right. What if they saw it today? Do you know that they preached against it? Ricky and Lucy, and I love Lucy. And did you know on Ricky and Lucy, they wouldn't even show them in the same bed, slept in separate beds. And they was married in real life. But the camera would not show. What have we come to now? God have mercy now. They wouldn't show Ricky and Lucy and they was married. Sleeping in the same bed like that other guy, Dick Van Dyke. What's your name? 
uh, in, in the same way. And now you turn the TV on and you got two women making out with each other. That's how far down the sewer that we went in this country. And them old men, you know what old Carl Lackey did? Old Carl Lackey, uh, he didn't have a TV. Them preachers wouldn't even own a TV. What if they seen it now? What if they had the internet and your phone and my phone now? You know what he done? He went and rented him a TV and stayed home one Sunday night and watched it. Didn't even go to church. And people said, where's the preacher? He stayed home and watched TV. He don't have a TV. He said, he come back the next Sunday and said, bless God, if y'all can do it, I can do it. He sure did. He said, you can lay out and watch TV, I can too. And of course, he was just trying to make a point. But listen, them old, them old codgers was rough, buddy. I'm glad I got to hear some men like that preach. I'm glad. I might have been one of these guys now. So let's just, I'm just so excited about this new series and this new series that I'm going to unpack for you. And we're just so excited about what God's doing here at the Leaf. And now we're going to be at the twig and, and, uh, and the pebble. I'm telling, thank God there's some old men of God that cut their teeth on a King James Bible and let her reap and preach heaven sweet and hell hot and gun barrel straight. I thank God there's somebody who wasn't ashamed to be a preacher. But we're losing it. We're losing it. I got in on the tail end of it. Them old men of God's gone. Dr. Seidler's gone. Dr. Harold Seidler. He, I preached that message at a new man at one time. And he came and preached on Baptist distinctives. And showed our Baptist faith. Going all the way back back to the days of the apostles. And how it helped us. Hey, what would he think about what we're doing now in church? Good night in the morning. I wonder. But I, I'll send y'all. You want something hard? Here's some hard preaching. I'll send it to you. Let me know if you want that church. Dr. Carl Lackey. I also had him preach for us at New Man. I preached at his church in White Plains right up there at Mayberry. Brother, he said, I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to preach. You young preachers, don't be a smart aleck. But brother, you stand up there like a four-star general and have your gun loaded and open that old black back 66 and brother, let her rip and let the chips fall where they will. Amen. I'd rather not have a crowd than to let a big crowd control me and tell me what you can preach and what you can't preach. You heard me tell uh, one night years ago, I used to go up to uh, Spruce Pine. When Spruce Pine first got a Super Walmart, and I think Spruce Pine got a Super Walmart for Mary. I can't remember that. But anyway, we'd go up there and play basketball on Monday night at the uh, at that big old place. I forget the name of it. Uh, anyway, big old gym. I go find a bunch of guys being there, and we we had some good, really good basketball games. And we'd come back and get groceries there at the uh, Spruce Pine Walmart. I have past years done gone. Carry me and remember Chris and Corey did it, and it snowed. We ride sleds up there, and everything. and and we come back. Well, one night I was, I was by myself, and I went in there. This it's been twenty years ago, and I I went in there. I, I was in Walmart walking around, and I changed clothes. From playing ball, got all dried up, went in there, and uh, I was going to get some uh, material cloth we was going to use for the youth rally. Now, I'd always buy a certain color, like this, whatever this is. This is blue, but it's got a little bit of twinge or something, you know, a little aqua, something or another. Anybody. Or it'd be that, or it'd be yellow, or it'd be uh, pink, or pute, or whatever, whatever these colors are. And, uh, and I'd, I'd get calls like that. Well, I, I went and got some, and uh, it, it it didn't have. I couldn't find nobody back there, you know, to help me with it. So I just got the whole roll. And I went to check it out, and I said, "I'm by the." She said, "You have to have that measured, sir." And I said, "Look, they, I couldn't find nobody back there. I'll just buy the whole thing." And she said, "You have to have it measured." I can't. I said, "Look, it says it said a dollar seventy nine a yard. They couldn't be more. I'll give ten dollars for it. Ring it up." And uh, she, she wouldn't do it. So I had to go back there. And this was late at night, about, about 9, 9, 9.30 at night. And I walked back there where the, the uh, fabric section is. You know, they got this big table, and they got all these different colors of fabric. What was it? These little things like that right there. All, all colors, all down through there. And there was a crowd of people there. A whole circle, made in a half circle like this, 
around, around that table. And so I walked up, and somehow or another, I, I walked, there was a table, and I put my, I put my table down like that and looked, and they all looked at me. And I said, hey, how's everybody doing? They thought I was some big shot from Walmart that, and is having an employees meeting. And they said, fine, fine. I said, look, did everybody go to church yesterday? They went. I said, Sam would turn over in his grave if he knew how this play. And I, and I preached them a sermon. And they figured out about a halfway into that that I was not they, somebody that worked for Walmart. But I let her rip, man. I, I, listen, you can't take somebody like me and put them from a crowd like that. We got a one-track mind. I mean, someone says, preach. I, I, listen, brother, if a man's called to preach, Ed McAbee said, you can go ahead and get him at 3 o'clock in the morning, wake him up, stand him up, slap him with a red rag, swing him around two or three times, and holler, preach, and he'll cut loose 90 miles an hour. I'm telling you, God put something on the inside of a person. Paul said, I'm ready to preach. You know, after I got done that night, I was pushing my buggy out, and two or three of them come around and said, son, I enjoyed everything you said up there a while ago. I enjoyed every bit, but some of them didn't enjoy it. You said, Brother Danny, you didn't. I did. And if I had it to do over, I'd do it a little stronger. Amen. Listen, we ain't got but one life. It really don't matter what people think about us. Look, we're, you're, I mean, you're in spruce pine. And you're worried about your reputation. I mean, good Lord, people, it ain't going to matter. It ain't going to matter. What, who cares what these people out here think? Who cares if they think you're a little bit fanatic? Good not get over yourself. Let's just have a, let's just grab a handful of tracks and get ready to preach when we get out of here. Amen. I heard about a lawyer one time. I went to a barber shop and, uh, and the, the barber was a Christian. He's cutting a man's hair. And the lawyer come in and he said, uh, Hey, fellas! You know, he's taking his coat off. They hanging on that, hanging on that little thing. Get a haircut. He said, "What's the good news?" And the barber said, "Jesus saved. He's coming back again." He said, "What?" He said, "Jesus saves. He died for sinners. He's coming back." That guy got quiet, boy. I'm telling you that. You want to quiet him down a barber shop? You want to quiet him down over there at the beauty shop, lady? You just step up and speak up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I've preached right in the middle of Times Square before. I have. A bunch of us get right in the smack dab middle of New York City, Times Square. Amen. Uh, Carrie, you got to take Dax out the other day. Dax hadn't been in New York City. And he went down there. Everybody probably should go once. That's plenty. And uh, I, we took a bank down there in the middle of Times Square. You know how them roads come down like this at an angle? That's, that's the headquarters of the world, brother. And I took a gang of kids out there. We took a guitar and I said, sing. They started singing like we did a while ago. People, you know, people could feel a difference. They was hanging, they was looking at them, them skyscrapers. We're up there on the 30th floor. People was hanging out looking like, what in the world is going on? I said, the Bible says, repent and believe the gospel. We rented two of them big old uh, trolley tram things, you know, that got upper and lower. Brother, did, did you go on that trip with us, Brandon? Uh, and can, anybody else? The, Brian, anybody else? Jeff, uh, tell them. I'm telling the truth. They can back it up. We rented two of them things. Took a hundred people, rode all over town, middle of New York City, even toward Harlem, brother. And I mean, we got down there, we got, and somebody throwed a piece of raw meat right up into a hit one of the girls, like, like you've been cut out guts off some animal or something. Probably sacrificed or something. Uh, but anyway, well, we had the time. We said, we are ready to preach. We was ready to preach. We were ready to preach. And just saying, Jesus died for sinners. Jesus died for sinners. I remember one night, I was a man one night. I don't know if I get all this or not, but I'll tell you a story. One time, I, I was on fire for the Lord, and I was in Kentucky Fried Chicken, and I was getting ready to go to church on Wednesday night, and it was in the wintertime, and it was pitch dark outside and raining in Marion, the old Kentucky Fried Chicken, down there where Spencer's Hardware is now, for you that, that from up there, and near there. And I was sitting in there, and I was just about through eating, and that place was full of people. I was getting ready to go to church. And all of a sudden, lightning bolt hit out there and hit the street, and the power went out. The street lights went out. It got pit. You couldn't, you couldn't see your hand in front of you. It got pitch dark in there. And I wiped my mouth, throwed my stuff down, and I sat up and said, Remember, 
It's just going to be that quick when Jesus comes. But you could hear a pin drop. And I just snuck out the door. And I left them sitting in there like that. Now I bet when the lights come on, they look at me like, who was that? So I, I don't know what happened to him. You did not. I did too. I did. That's fun. I, 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 lo- I loved it. I just to scare the devil out of people. Amen. That's what they need. Nobody never done me like that when I was not saved. I'm glad we got to do it. Hallelujah. I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to preach. Amen. That's right, brother. I'm ready to preach. Number, number, number three, quickly. I'll say this when I'm through. I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Jesus ain't nothing to be ashamed of. There's a male old boy preaching on the street one time, and there's a big shop lady went by, and she said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And you know what he told her? He said, lady, I am ashamed of myself. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Mm, boy, he nailed it there. That's that scripture that said, take no thought what you'll say, for the Holy Ghost will give you in that hour what Jesus will speak. Son, he nailed it, buddy. He said, I am ashamed of myself. I am nothing, but I'm not ashamed of him. Thank God I'm not ashamed of him. There are people all over Burke County, they'll tell you, Danny Castle ain't fit to listen to. You know what? They're right. They'll tell you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't walk across the road to hear him. He, uh, he ain't worth the, they'll, then they're right. I wouldn't walk across the road to hear me. But they're missing the whole point, buddy. I'm not up here advertising myself. I'm not up here trying to push mine. Lord, I don't care if they I'm never know. I'm, I'm representing somebody bigger and greater. And you ain't going to find nothing wrong with him. Lord, of God, if I don't shut up. I'm going to take a running fit on the aisle and just say, glory to God, it's good to be saved. It's good to know who Jesus is. We don't need to be ashamed. We need to hit them streets. We need to tell everybody how good he is. Amen, brother. He said, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I know what God done for me, and I ain't ashamed of it. Right. That's good for you. He said, I'm not ashamed. Years ago up in Danville, Virginia, they was having a New Year's Eve service. And the preacher preached on soul winning. He said, we need to go out and tell them. He said, tell everybody. And a woman in the church got tore up. And she came and she said, she said, I got an unsaved neighbor. She said, I don't think my neighbor's saved. She's a nice lady. And she's, uh, you know, she's real respectable. And everybody knows her. Do this for I trip and break my food neck on and she said, everybody likes her. She's well to do. And she said, but she's not saved. And the preacher, preacher revival said, will you go get her and bring her tomorrow night? Sure enough. She went home. She said, you got to go with me. You got to please go with me. You know, people can tell when you care about them like that. They can. They, they can tell it. And she, sure enough, she brought that a nice, attractive, uh, clean, young woman. And brought her said, here's the preacher. And the preacher said, ma'am, your, your neighbor here tells me that maybe, maybe you're not a Christian. Are you a Christian? And she sort of looked down and said, no, I'm not. And he said, wouldn't you like to know how Jesus loved you? And wouldn't you like to know how you can be saved and go to heaven when you die? And she said, yes. And right there led that woman to the Lord. Right there. She didn't, didn't even wait till church started. Led that woman to the Lord right there. My, my, my. I mean, tell me something greater than that, y'all. Tell me something greater than that. I heard about up in Michigan as a preacher got to preaching and people got under a burden for their family. One way you know you're really getting right with God, you start getting a burden for your family, for your daddy, your mother, your sister, your brother. Uh, that's a sure sign. And he got burdened, a young preacher from college. And he said, I know who you're talking about. It's my daddy. He said, my daddy's not saved. I don't think he is. He said, I've never heard my daddy cuss. I've never heard my daddy tell a dirty joke. Daddy always pays his bill, but I don't think he's saved. He got in a car that night and drove 40 miles to Lansing, Michigan. And went and found his dad. And and he come, woke him up, 1.30 in the morning. And said, Daddy, I'm worried about you. I, tell me, are you, are you saved? And his daddy said, I can't believe you. Do you think I'm not a good person? 
He said, no, it's not that. He said, I, I know you're a good man, Daddy, but I'm wondering. And he went through the whole plan of salvation. And that man bowed his head and received the Lord Jesus Christ and got born again. His son laid in the Lord at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know what he did? He got a burden for him. He got a burden for him. You know what our problem is? We, we don't have no burden. We all care about our problems and our, our bills and our job and our, our adventures and our sports and our nothing, nothing wrong with all that. But brother, get a burden. Get a burden. Get a burden. Get a burden. Dr. John R. Rice gave the illustration. He was preaching out in Waxachi, Texas, many, many years ago. He said a man had been in the penitentiary, they did back then, five years for bootlegging. Back then, that's what they did. He'd been warned, he'd been warned, run a, run, a, run a big bootlegging outfit and put in the penitentiary for five years. And he got out. And Dr. Rice was preaching a big citywide campaign in that city. And that man sent for him said, somebody tell that preacher, come over here, I want to talk to him. And he said, he got the message, he told his wife, he said, I'm going over, he wants to talk to me. She said, don't go, honey. Don't go, that man will kill you. You preach against liquor, you preach against beer and wine, don't go over there, he'll kill you. No, and he said, no, he called and I'm going. He took off and he went over there and there was that man. Sitting in a wheelchair. Life ruined. Body ruined. And he said, how can I help you? He said, I want to ask you something. And John R.I. said, now, he, he said, that man said, all these people's hypocrites. He said, I gave that man, that sheriff, $200. That was a lot, a lot of money back then. He said, I gave him a car to campaign in and $200 for his election. And I helped get him elected. And as soon as he got in office, he sent me the penitentiary. And Dr. I said, well, I'll tell you now, before we start talking, I'm against the liquor traffic. He said, I'm not, I don't agree with everything that goes on, these people and everything, but I am totally against it. And that man looked at him and he said, that's why I sent for you. He said, I want to meet somebody that ain't a hypocrite. He said, I want to meet one preacher that really believes what he preaches. And Dr. I said, Christ died for your sins. He got, and led that man to the Lord right there. And listen, people, you look, look, we're, we're living in a day when people think we have to bring God down and make him cool and everything. So we'll track the young people and, and you gotta you gotta you gotta tra- cut out all this stuff. We we don't want to preach and we wanna uh we want our little small groups to just sit and all give our opinion and talk. I'm not against getting together in our Bible say, don't don't go crazy on me. But I tell you, brother, that you know what the people don't like? Preach it. They don't like somebody to get up and just preach. But I'm telling you, there is something supernatural about preaching. Hey, not the preacher. Preaching. There is something supernatural about preaching. There's something happens when a preacher's hooked up. You see this camp meeting? By the time them words leave his mouth and get in your heart, the Holy Ghost takes them and works all kind of stuff in the whole church while a man's up preaching. Seen it a hundred, hundred times. You heard me tell a story. I was in West Virginia at Brother Gary Hunt's church preaching. A couple years, well, it's been about three years ago now. And I preached, and I preached my head off. I screamed, and I hollered, and I rant and raved, hollered and screamed, run around. And we had a few people come up. There's a bunch of old rough guys come in that night. Looked like they just got out of the coal mine. Some of them wear their old coal mine and clothes to church, and their hands are black. And they wash them, but they're still. Got that old black got all in their fingernails and down in their, the pores of their skin. You can't hardly get it off. And, and you can tell rough bunch of old boys that I preached that night. That night after, after church, I, I was staying um, at, at a, I think I stayed in a motel that time. It was a good way to the church, so my phone worked. I think that's what it was. Gary called me. And I'd preached my head off that night. I said, you people are going to hell if you don't get saved. If you don't get saved, you're going to hell. I said, you listen to me, big boy. You keep living like that, you're going to die and go to hell. You hear me? You're going to die and go to hell, big boy. You don't get right with God. Now, Gary called me. He said, Brother Danny, I thought I'd give you some good news. I said, good, let's hear it. He said, that bunch of old rough guys back there, they just left the house. I said, really? Cool. He said, they come over here knocking on my door. And he said, that one one, he said, 
Who was that person in there? He said, that's Danny Castle. One of my friends from North Carolina. And he said, I don't know what are and he, and he got saved. Guy got saved. Got down the floor and got saved. And then he looked at him and he said, how do you know my name? And Gary said, I don't know. What are you talking about? We know everybody in West Virginia has got a nickname. His nickname was Big Boy. Truth, my hand to heaven. And I run over that hook. You better get saved, big boy. You're going to hell, big boy. He, he, he thought, this person don't even know me. <laughs> and I, I said, woo! That, that's the honest truth, y'all. Listen, there's something supernatural about this. I had no idea. Listen, I was preaching in Marion one night on a Sunday night. Y'all heard me tell it, but I just think this is the coolest story ever. The guy... And I didn't know this till about nine or ten years ago. It's been 30 years. And we had this guy come. He said, he, he asked me, he said, you know this guy? I said, no, I don't know him. He said, he came to New Manor one Sunday night. And that night, there's probably, I don't know, six, seven hundred people uh, sitting in there. He said, he said, he, we talked him into coming one night. And he said, he was one of these guys that was super particular about his hair. You ever seen these guys, people, I mean, he just couldn't, he couldn't stand about like Mike, me doing like that right there. He couldn't stand that. He couldn't stand nobody to touch his hair. Now, women a lot of times are worse over that than men, but there are some men like that. They got it all styled and they want it just perfect. And, and, and women like, I've seen women come across the parking lot and the wind's blowing and they walk like this. <laughs> you know, because they don't want the wind to mess their hair. That's the way this guy was. And he, got, and he said, he said, Danny, you don't know this. It's been 20 years ago at that time, 30 now. He said, I was just a preaching up a storm like I am here tonight. He said, I stopped. He said, I run down the aisle, 700 people there. And he said, I put my hand right on that guy's head. Like, Truth. I had no idea he was there. I didn't know him. He didn't know me. He said, that guy liked to die. And he said, he said, you know what? He got to deal with him. He started going to church and wound up being a preacher. Sure did. He might be preaching or not. I don't know. I'm telling you, listen, the, the Lord said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And lo, I am with you all. There's something supernatural about preaching, God. Supernatural. Not preachers. Somebody hear me say, oh, those preachers think they're, we ain't nothing. We're just a vessel that if we can get rid of ourselves enough, God might flow through and use to help other people. That's all a preacher is. Supernatural. It's supernatural. I'm ready to preach. They said this. He said, well, Brother Danny, I've tried, and every time I make up my mind to go to go visiting, something happens, the devil cheats me out. I heard about this boxer. And boxing, he got the living daylights knocked out of him. In the first round, got knocked down. And the old boy got back up. And he got hit twice in the first round and knocked down. And then, about the third round, he, wound, he learned how to take his glove and stop that left-handed uppercut. This fellow he was fighting. That guy come up like, that left so he got putting his glove there and blocking it like that. And little by little, third round, he did better. Fourth round, did better. Fifth round, did better. Sixth, and at the end of ten rounds, the judges held his hand up and said, he's won the fight. He got knocked down, but he got back up. He got knocked down, but he kept getting up. Listen, the Bible says, a righteous man falleth seven times and riseth up again. It's not how many times the devil gets you down and rubs your nose, boys. It, the devil may trip you up. You may feel like the biggest hypocrite in the world. You just dust yourself off. Learn how to block that stuff and stand up. Block's a good word now, ain't it? Block it. And brother, stand up and say, I'm in this fight to win for the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of people have asked about Dax. You know, he's racing professionally now. It's not, it's not like a sport where he just plays fun. It's a, it's a Job, income, it's, it's, his, it's his whatever, life. And he got hurt last week. And I seen that picture on the internet with his nose bleeding, back hurt. And they flew him. They flew him.
from uh, wherever they is at, Florida, I guess, Dallas, Texas, straight to New York to an expert doctor that's supposed to be going back because you got a bull's disc in your back, or it could be a lot of other things. You ever had a dull visit? It, like a disc just pushes out a little bit and it hits that nerve, man. You think it's rough. It's rough. I tell you one thing. I've had them a couple of times. Four back when I was young, I'd hurt my back a few times. And I tell you one thing. The last thing you want to do is ride a motorcycle, <laughs> especially jumping and hitting. Well, they can't. They can't dope them up because they're not allowed to have no drugs in their system. They can't take drugs in their system. Like when they went in, they got them monster drinks and stuff. They don't even drink them things, right? He don't even drink them things. And they sponsor him. I guess they don't know if they won't know that, but uh, they just do it. It's, it's an advertising. And uh, his back was hurt. His nose was bleeding. And some of the family said, why don't you just, why don't you, you know, you hate to see somebody, hate to see you. Man, you just get the fool beat out of him like that. Why don't you just quit? And the answer to that is, If he had quit in him, he wouldn't be where he is right now. Yeah. He ain't got no quit in him. I mean, if it happens, it happens. And I thought, and and I'm I'm I, I'm I'm nervous. I'm worried about him. My sister worries herself to death. Debbie, she's watching right now. But if we had that kind of tenacity for soul winning, I'm going to do it. If I get hurt. If my back's hurting, I'll go. If my head's hurting, I'll go. If I and, and I'm talking about spiritually, the devil, the devil. Gets, I know people say, "Brother Danny, the devil just been on me all week," and I just, I just, I just don't go and witness, and I just feel like a hypocrite. That that you got to learn to overcome stuff like that. The building's burning down. Don't be caught with your bucket full. I'm ready to preach. And I, I remember Jack Hiles telling about, I think it's Terry Bradshaw, or one of them great quarterbacks. Might have been Terry Bradshaw. Preached with a hundred, I mean, he, he played football with 102 fever. Was it him? Some, you remember that game Michael Jordan played and he had 103 fever and the flu, and when they called timeout, he was just like this. Like that right there. And he went out there, and I mean, won that game, buddy. You know what that is? You say, well, that's crazy. Anybody do that? That's what made him what he was. That mentality of I'm not going to let nothing stop me. I mean nothing. Nothing. Listen, the devil's throwed everything at me but the kitchen sink, brother. And I ain't much. I'm just a little nobody. I'm just little Danny Castle. But by the grace of God, I want to preach till the light goes out. My candle's gone. And they lay my body in a hole out yonder somewhere. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. He said this preacher one time, years ago, was driving home one day, and he said he's a pastor, preacher. And he said, Hey, look, there's like around here, we got a little low place like that in the river, and there's a bunch of old boys down there partying. And he said, uh, they're down there having a party and cutting up, sitting on the car hood, getting high. And he said, the Lord spoke to him and said, you ought to go down there and witness them boys. And he, I know exactly how he felt. I've done this a hundred times. Now, well, I, I'm in a hurry right now. And, and, and I, I, I know, I'll come back. They, they don't want somebody right there. They're all together. Y'all know, do y'all know what I'm talking about? You, if you feel like the Lord wants you to witness to them and, and you come up with all these reasons why you shouldn't, that's, I'm like that. My mind works like that. Well, I do it at a gas station all the time. Guy next door, looks over here putting in gas, and the devil says, he's an atheist, and he'll cuss you out. Don't give him a track. And all that. I, don't, I don't think that's the Lord telling me that. The Lord don't say, he's an atheist, and he'll cuss you out. <laughs> the Lord would say, that man might be an atheist. Go kill. Give him a track. That's the way the Lord talks. And so he said, he said, I'll, I'll get them later, Lord. And he came back. And he went on home. And he said, he hadn't been home 30 minutes and he heard sirens going off. And he said, he jumped in his car and run back up there. And he said, he got back there and the siren, there's an ambulance around them boys 
there was a car off the side of the road. And they're sitting there crying, bawling their eyes out. The police was there. And he said, there's a body laying in the road, but covered up with a, with a, with a blanket. An elderly woman had come out to go check the mail. Run over it. He said, I had to live with that the rest of my He said, if I'd have witness to him, happened. And you know something? We pass people every day. We work with people every day. It's we got the biggest opportunity to win souls we have all year, youth rally. I, I'm asking everybody in here, will y'all y'all hit me? Y'all y'all come sing something. I'm not ashamed. I'm ready to preach. I'm not ashamed. I am ready to preach. And I am a debtor to everybody in America. I think I need to do it again. It's about time for me to do it again for you, Thrally. Go down Hoppy Tom and knock on every single door. They all know me. Everybody knows. When I'm running, hey, Danny. Hey. You know, they all, everybody down through there knows me. And some of them, it's hard to witness to them. But I think for you, Thrally. I'm going to go to every door. Is it asking too much of us? I stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. Heavenly Father, I pray right now you do something here real tonight. Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, take these few words here tonight and make us soul winners for Jesus' sake. God, forgive me as a pastor of this church for not being a better example God help me. Help me be a soul winner, Lord. Them boys over at the gym, the boys at the Y, my neighbors. Oh God. Oh God, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Let's come and be soul winners tonight. Go ahead, girls. Amen. Y'all some help Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. When I stumble, yeah. if I fall, it comes tonight. What about your neighbor? What about that person down the road? What about that cousin, that sister, Help that me not in seek and sue. Let thy work in me resume. More like you, and less like me. That is how I long to be. Here, Lord, my earnest plea. Let me be more like you, and less like me. I'm going to get in the bus ministry. I want the bus ministry, preacher. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Amen. And bring your blessings to my mind And how to me you've been so kind And when your spirit takes control let the hallelujahs roll more like you and less like me. That is how I long to be. like me and someday Lord 
I know I'll be more like you and less like me. Boy, what a prayer. More like you, less like me. If I could be more like Jesus and less like Danny, I'd get a lot more done. You know who my biggest problem is? Right here. That's my biggest problem. So boy, right here. You know who your biggest problem is? That fella you shave every morning. Or that lady you look in the mirror at every day. That's your biggest problem. We need to be more like him, less like us. It's not my brother nor my sister. Me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. People, we have the opportunity to really do something for God this summer. I, I want a revival to come to our church. I want some of you people that's mad at each other to make up. I want some of you that won't speak to each other to get your heart right with each other. I know, I know. I, I want some of you that don't, ain't faithful to get faithful. I want some of you that, that don't give to start giving. I want some of you that never cry to cry. I'd like to see God do a miracle in our church. And He's able to do it. He's able. The problem ain't with Him. It's us. More like Him. Less like me. We got an opportunity this summer to really, really do something for God and make a mark. Let's do it. Amen. You can turn the cameras off there. We don't, there's not, I'm not saying this boast.